Hey guys, Steve here from the Cook Family Homestead, and yes, I look a little different. I have the old four and a half weeks into my hunting beard, and I'm pretty pretty stoked. Ten days from now is the beginning of archery, uh, but uh, yeah, love growing beard for hunting season. So, but anyway, <laughs> I am doing a project today that I wanted uh, uh, to show you. Um, it's something that I've been planning to do for a while, and um, I wanted to hook up a generator to our to be able to power our home when we have power outages. Now. Uh, we've been here about ten or six six years, and we've had well over ten power outages. And I'm not talking when they flicker; I'm talking out <laughs> for hours. And uh, the other night, we about two weeks ago, we had one for about two and a half hours or so, and you know it was around nine at night. And uh, it, you realize how helpless you are. You know, we have plenty of candles and lights and that kind of stuff. And we're not, you know, we have tons of food preps and all this other stuff. But one thing we were, we've never really been up to par on in our preps was electricity and power outages. You know, how are you going to survive if you were down for a week without power? And we get horrendous weather here. I mean, we get feet and feet of snow and below zero temperatures and all this other stuff. So what what we what would we do so this is something I've been really researching and and looking into and, and I finally pulled the trigger and decided after this last power outage we gotta get this done we just gotta have it before winter hits because we're inevitably gonna have one or two power outages this winter at least I mean that's just the way it is and it could be for 24 hours you know what are you gonna do so um, I'm going to take you along with me today, show you how I'm doing this, and uh, you know I'm going to also break down the cost. Um, if you can see there in the bed of my truck, I have a brand new Predator generator I just picked up from Harbor Freight. It's the 9000, it's the big boy, uh, and uh, pretty excited. Uh, it actually has five star review. It, it, it's it's I've I've done my research on this, so I'm I'm pretty excited to to give this a whirl. So let's get started. Well, there is the Predator. I gotta unbox it here, but that's the 9,000 watt. Uh, this is the biggest one they have. Now, I'll tell you the costs and the things you're going to need to get started here. This is this was $629. I had a coupon for it. Uh, they normally run at $699 is the, the list price, but they had a special going on, so I got it for $629. I also got the battery. Now, you don't need this battery if you don't want. You can pull start it, but I wanted the electric start. That battery was $39.99. Um, I had a 20% off coupon and so I got about $31. Uh, you'll need some fuel stabilizer. I bought that, I think it was a buck 99. Um, and what that for is if you're gonna keep fuel in your generator, unless you're gonna take it out every few weeks and change it, you're gonna want some stabilizer so it, uh, you know, so the fuel doesn't clog up your system or anything. Um, this cord here is $49.99. It's a $50 cord. This is the cord you need. It's a, a four prong uh, cord. This is the one you'll run from your generator to your fuse box. To the outlet you install. Um, this is a 10 gauge cord. cord. I think I picked this up before I got the generator um, and this one I also had a 20% coupon on so I ended up getting it for about $40. And then this is something else you might not need. Let me set this up here is a wheel kit because your generator does not come with the wheels or the handle. Now if you're going to put it somewhere permanent obviously you don't need the wheel kit uh, but they make two wheel kits a 10 inch and an 8 inch. I just got the 8 inch because that's all I'm going to need but I'm definitely not going to have it in a permanent place. So. So there are the things you'll need. You'll also need some 10W30 oil, which I already have, but you gotta um, uh, get that in. I think it takes a little over a quart, but I'll, I'll confirm that once I open it up. Well, there is my main fuse box, and my main fuse box is in my garage because the garage is built first, so the electric comes here and then goes underground to the house. But let me show you how this is wired up. Very easy. This is probably one of the easiest parts of the whole job. Here is the main switch for all the electric, the power, and then this is a generator breaker that I put in. This is a 30 amp double breaker, and um, and the only thing I don't have on here yet is it's called an interlock switch, which I do have ordered, they just didn't have it in. And what that does, it's kind of like an L-shaped bracket. It kind of goes like that. 
and when you turn this on, it turns your main off, and vice versa. If you turn your main back on, it shuts this one off. And you, the reason you have that is because you can never, you don't want your generator switch pushing power back into your box and you have your main pushing it back out. So um, you always gotta turn your main off before you turn your generator power on. So that's why that's on there. So I, I'll have that on there pretty soon. But let me show you, that runs down here. There's a piece of conduit and then here is my plug that the generator plug will plug into. And it's just a four prong outlet with a cover. And this whole cover, box, outlet, piece of conduit was about $30. So 30 and eight, so about 40 bucks for the, the breaker and all your, and your uh, plug there. But I will say that interlock device here that's gonna go here was about $60. So you're gonna need about $100, $110 or so for your fuse box to get this all wired up. But it is pretty simple to do. Okay, well there it is all unboxed and it has like a quick start reference guide. And what I like about this too is it tells you kind of um, estimate wattage charges for you know lights and dryers and refrigerators and all that stuff. So that gives you a good starting reference of what you wanna run in your house, what you could run with this. So there it is all unboxed and it comes with these tools, uh, 10 millimeter wrench, Phelps head wrench, and then I th these are for your battery tied down. And then it also comes with this wrench, which I'm not sure what that one's for yet. So I'll figure that out here in a minute. All right, got the wheel kit on, the handle on, and let me tell you, this thing is heavy. I'm guessing 200, 250 pounds. I mean, it is, <laughs> it's not light to move around. But just run real quick thing. Uh, the battery and the instructions, if you can see right there, the positive on the battery is on the right-hand side, negative on the left, and the directions it shows you it's on the right and opposite, you know, and the negatives on your right and the positives on your left. So just a quick little thing. Uh, not that big of a deal, but they don't give you a lot of play in the cord there, so uh, just a heads up. So let's get some fuel, some oil in this, run it, and then we'll plug it into the house and see how it works. All right, let's fire this bad boy up. Now, the one thing I will say is I put oil in there. I wanted to tell you guys what it takes, the gas. That's an eight gallon tank. So it's a, it's a pretty big tank, eight gallons. And I filled it right up. So that's your gas uh, gauge right there. So it's full if it's all red. And then the other thing is the oil is not a very accessible spot. So you need a long neck funnel. Uh, and I didn't have one, but I was able to get it in there, but that takes a little over a quart. So it's like 1.16, I believe is the actual measurement. So let's fire it up. Okay, it does have pull start, but I might use the electric start. So what you're gonna do is you turn your fuel on, that's uh, straight up, and your choke. <clears throat> and so if you see up here, it tells you to start, you want your choke all the way over, and to run, you'll put it back all the way over. So, and it also tells you your fuel. So I am on, choke is on, and then we should just push this button and it should start. So let's give it a, we'll move the choke back. We are running. That is way quieter than I thought it was gonna be way quieter. I'll put the microphone next to it. That is unbelievably quieter than I thought. I thought it would be twice that loud. So we'll let it run for about 10 minutes or so. And then I'm gonna hook up, check the oil and everything, and then I'm gonna hook up the power. Okay, so this is the where the power comes in, in the basement. And this is where it comes to this panel. So one of the things I am gonna shut off, that says chicken coop, but that's our barn. So I turn that on off, but I'm gonna keep all the rest of these on. Um, 
and I'm just gonna turn stuff off in the house. But that is one I'm gonna turn off and then I'm gonna go up to the uh, main panel of the house and I'll show you that. Okay, so these are the main, this is the main power in the house and everything in our house is electric because we have propane heat. So um, I don't even have the furnace on, so I don't have to worry about turning that on. Um, but I am gonna keep everything on. We're just not gonna, for the, I, the one thing I am, want to try out is the water pump. So I'm going to keep that on. Um, the washer and the dryer, obviously we don't even, we're not going to use them. So I'll leave them on because I'm just not going to pull power from that. But uh, so let's see how this works. All right, so we're going to fire this up in the house or try to run the house. So I got the cord plugged in. A couple of other quick things on this. This also has an oil shut off. Um, so if you do get low oil, it will shut off automatically by itself, which is a good protective, um, you know, ability of the, of it. So, and, uh, man, it, it was a lot quieter than I thought it's loud, but it's not as loud as I was expecting. Some of the reviews said it was loud. So I have the cord plugged in and, uh, I have a couple things turned off in the house. And the other thing I'm going to turn off are my lights in the garage. So we'll shut those off just to keep a little bit power. So I'm gonna turn off the main and that should take off power for everything. So we'll shut that off and I'm gonna go make sure everything's shut off. All right, it's all dark in here, right? No power. All right, here we go, moment of truth. We'll go fire it up. Let's uh, get it fired up. for a minute and then we'll make the transfer. Okay, here we go, moment of truth. You can hear a draw right when I did it. Let's go and see inside and see what we got. <laughs> All right, we got lights. Let's see if the water pump's working. We got water. The well pump is working. Okay. And ceiling fan. Refrigerator lights on? Yeah, let's try the refrigerator. I can hear the refrigerator running. Yep. So there it is. Let's see the microwave, yeah. So let's turn on some lights. Now an average light will run let me see in the basement if the lights are on. Yep, lights are all on. Awesome. <laughs> so we can have water and ceiling fans and fridges and freezers can all run. Perfect. Stove takes a lot of power, so if we were to use that, don't mind our messy house. It's homeschooling day, so. All right, I'm gonna try something outside now. Okay, so right now I think I'm drawing about 35 to 4,000 uh, watts of power with everything I have in the house. So I should have plenty of more. So what I'm gonna try is, let's turn on the garage lights. Look at that. And I also want to try the garage door. We'll turn that on. And let's open and close the door. This is my big door. Beautiful. So, that is phenomenal. All right, I switch back and 
my pile of garbage that's going out this week. <laughs> but uh, oh my word, worked perfect, worked perfect. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do like some rough. I have some rough calculations what I'm what I was using there. I have two freezers, two refrigerators that were going, the lights, some ceiling fans. Uh, the water pump, a couple other things, and I would think I was around four forty-five hundred, 4,500, just rough estimate uh, of watts. So I had, you know, some more stuff I could do. Um, but that thing runs the house easily. <laughs> like, not even... Uh, so, so far, so good. Now, that was only like a five, ten minute test, but um, I'm going to do a better test here coming up. All right, guys, hey, just my final, uh, uh, you know, two cents on this thing. Um, so far, just phenomenal investment. Uh, it was about a total of $850. So from cord, from the, the fuse box to the cord to battery to even my two quarts of oil, because um, I paid 13 bucks for synthetic oil um, for two quarts. So every, well, I didn't include the gas. So it takes eight gallons of gas on top of that. So $850, which is a huge investment for us, but worth it. And uh, I'm gonna do some kind of figure in here of how long I have to run it to get by each day to keep freezers and, you know, all that other stuff going. And I'm thinking on a tank of gas, I could probably get through about four days, you know, running it periodically three to four hours a day. Uh, in a 24 hour period. So um, I wanna keep enough fuel to be able to run for a um, couple week period uh, or even longer. So we'll have to run some tests and some figures on that. But I wanted to also say, hey, it comes with this quick guide and it's pretty neat because it has some charts in the back to kind of tell you what things take wattage wise, you know, computers and refrigerators and radios and things like that. So you kind of can get a rough estimate what you need. Uh, so if you have, you know, one refrigerator and, you know, a small house, you might not even need the 9,000. You might be able to get, you know, the 6,000 um, and save you some money. So I uh, hope that helps you out. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions or comments or, you know, advice, throw it down in the comments. So take care. Thanks for watching. God bless you all.